Now there's three levels of tonality. You can use nasal tonality where the sound is up here in your sinuses and if you talk like that it becomes really hard to be soothing on the other person's subconscious mind. Imagine going to see a hypnotherapist who talked with this kind of tonality. I want you to relax. <laughs> breathe in. Breathe out. And as you do, you're going to go deeper into trance. And in fact, what happens is nasal tonality kind of stays near the top of your head. Make your hair stand on end a little bit. So it stands in the cognitive part of your brain. It's not really deep and persuasive. Then there's throat tonality. By the way, one of the ladies who had nasal tonality came up to me in a workshop and she said, when I talk to people, they think I'm nagging them. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I could see that. I can see what you mean. So nasal tonality. Then there's throat tonality. You can speak from your throat. If you sing or talk for any length of time and you're uncomfortable, your throat will tend to constrict. And that's where you'll see people kind of take a big gulp because they're speaking from their throat. Or you can speak from your diaphragm. You can get that deep, resonant tonality. Which type of tonality do you find most soothing and that reaches in and persuades you to the greatest extent? It's the diaphragmatic tonality. What's the name of that singer? He died a few years ago. He had a really deep, resonant voice, and he talked about love and Barry White. Okay, Barry White, excellent. Now, what's the name of that actor that really, he does a lot of voiceover work, he's still alive, he, he played the voice of Darth Vader in Star Wars, James Earl Jones, yes? What was the name of that movie where Tom Cruise played a sports agent? Jerry Maguire. Now all I've demonstrated there is a few things. Number one is any question I pose to you, your brain will go and search for the answer. And even if you didn't get the right answer, even if you didn't get Barry White and James Earl Jones, your mind still came up with answers. You thought of some other singer who had a deep voice or something. So your brain went and searched for the information. When I asked about the Tom Cruise movie, maybe you knew the movie, maybe you didn't, but your brain sort of started to pull up the files. Let's see, Tom Cruise, sports movies, you were searching for the information. The thing to remember is any question posed to your mind will always cause it to go and find the answer, even if it has to make one up. This is important to know because when you ask people questions, their mind will go and search for the answer. So are you asking questions that unlock potential or are you asking questions that limit potential? We'll talk about that more. So the idea here is that the deeper your tonality, the more bass that you have in your voice, the more resonant your voice is, the more it bypasses the cognitive part of the brain and goes right into the brain stem. And it's at the brain stem level that you can get people to do what you want them to do. Now some of you are thinking, well if I show up at work tomorrow and I've lowered my voice down to this deep voiceover guy, you know, especially if you're a woman, you're saying, I want to have some femininity. I don't want to sound like I'm part of the Eastern European swim team from the 70s on steroids. I want to be a woman still. Well you can still have that essence if you simply deepen and make your voice more resonant. The other thing you'll find is if you want to be taken more seriously and you tend to talk at a faster pace, try talking at a slower pace and inserting more pauses into what you're saying. And what you'll allow your words to do is they will sink in, they will have gravitas. You'll become a master orator. Again, use it strategically, but use it when you need people to have greater confidence in what you're saying.